Now the number four has an extra hydrogen. You can draw that or not if you like, but it's lost its charge because it's gained an extra hydrogen uh, in this mechanism over here. And we get the same product that we got over here, but with one or two fewer steps. And the reason it was one or few tours steps is because we drew the resonant structure with the negative charge on the carbon, which is really who's ultimately getting protonated. If we draw the resonant structure with the negative charge on the oxygen, first we end up protonating the oxygen, and then we have to do that tautomerization step. Now, um, let's see, uh, so uh, a couple other important uh, points to make here. Now we can see why this is called 1,4 addition and why it's kind of misleading to call it 1,4 addition. It's called 1,4 addition because of this intermediate over here. At this point, at this point, the, this atom over here has um, been attacked by the nucleophile and the oxygen has gained uh, hydrogen. And notice that these are one, two, three, and four. If we called this the number one, this would be two, this would be three, and this would be four. That's why this is called a one, four addition because the carbon that's attacked and the oxygen that gets protonated are like in a 1-4 configuration with each other. Again, the 1 and the 4 are not IAPAC numbers. It just indicates that they, you can name number of these 1, 2, 3, and 4 over here. So it's called 1-4 addition to indicate that this carbon got attacked and this oxygen got protonated. But like I said, that's actually not a very useful way to think about it because this oxygen is not going to stay protonated. Instead, we're going to protonate this atom over here. So ultimately, what we're really ending up doing here is the nucleophile attacks the number three, and the, uh, the nucleophile attacks the beta carbon, and the alpha carbon protonates. And that's the slogan that you want to have in your mind for what's happening in these conjugate additions. Because ultimately, you want to be able uh, So the slogan here is ultimately, the nucleophile is attacking the beta carbon, and eventually, the alpha carbon is going to end up protonated. Ultimately, there's not going to be any change to the carbonyl. Ultimately, there's no change to the carbonyl, even if there are some changes in the mechanism. So again, in these conjugate additions, the nucleophile attacks the beta carbon, and then ultimately what's ending up is that the alpha carbon is ending up protonated, the carbonyl is not changing. This is called a conjugate addition because in the middle, both of the pi bonds might be involved, but ultimately the pi bond at the end gets reformed. It's as if it wasn't involved in the first place. Okay, so this mechanism is maybe a little bit less technically correct. The tautomerization mechanism probably is a little bit more technically correct. But usually this would be accepted. I think you'll have to check with your instructor and see what they do in the answer keys. But this certainly gives us a clearer clue of what's happening here. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm, or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.